Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Very good to see all of you. We're waiting for the others to join. So I would love to see uh, if my audio is clear or not. Please comment one and comment two if it's not clear. Sit back and relax, everyone. So we're still waiting for the others to join us. Audio is clear. Thank you. Hello. Good afternoon, Miss B. Hello, Raymond. Hello, Miss Stephanie. Hello, Alistair. Okay, right. I think everyone is here already, so we can start immediately. So once again, everyone, I welcome you for all for this law preview, Educational Pathway for Future Legal Profession. So that is our topic for today. So this, the Bachelor of Law program in Segi College Sarawak is a comprehensive program designed to equip students with a solid foundation in legal subjects to be successful in almost any career. Whether you intend to work in a legal profession or discover other career opportunity, this law program would give you a good head of start. First and foremost, I would love to introduce our speaker for today, which is Ms. Alamel Mungai. She is uh, our program leader for Faculty of Law. She had her education Master of Law from University of Malaya. And also she did her Bachelor of Law from Northumbria University. What is her industrial experience from HST Baharin and Partners? And then her teaching experience is from Segi College Subang Jaya, Dika College and also Segi College Sarawak. She also did her research paper, War Crimes in Mali, Changing the Target, Reforming Opinions on Banning of Autonomous Weapon System. Good afternoon, Ms. Alamel. How are you? Hi. Okay. So I would love to pass the floor to you right now.
Hi everyone. Good afternoon. Um, thank you to uh, Miss Cassandra for the warm welcome and the introduction. Um, welcome to all the participants. Um, thank you for joining us today in our first um, preview for the programs that we have in Sagi College, Sarawak. Um, based on the comments, I can see that uh, most of you are actually excited to know about the um, law program that we are talking about today. So um, I hope you are able to get a little bit of information that you want to know. Huh? Right. So um, in case you have any questions in between um, that maybe you have while I'm going through the um, explanation today, you may want to actually um, write it down in the comment section so that later when we are done, uh, we will be able to see to your questions. Right. So um, today we are talking about the um, program Bachelor of Laws Honors um, International Program. And this is uh, actually a collaboration program with the University of London from the UK. Right. So basically what we are looking at today is um, quite a number of things. We are first going to look at a little bit of an introduction to this program. Um, and then we will go into the details of the program where we will see um, the study period, the program structure and so on. And then we move on to the entry requirements um, followed by the mode of study. And then we will look at how classes will be conducted, how assessments will be conducted for this program. And then um, recognition of the program once you are done with it and what you can do after completion of the program. Right. And lastly, we will be looking at um, on how to apply and register for this LLB program. Yeah. Right. So bear with me for maybe 30 minutes or so. Right. And then we will look at your questions. Right. So Bachelor of Laws um, International Program. This is the program that we are currently offering in Sagi College, Sarawak. Um, this is an international program. Um, it is not a program that is uh, locally drafted or it is a program that has been uh, suited for the UK. This is much more suited for an international um, group, right? So it is internationally recognized and it is a law program that qualifies you to progress to legal practice and not only legal practice, we will look at any, um, more options later, yeah? Right. So it is a program designed for independent learning. It is a program that is designed to study at your pace. We will look at why we are exactly saying this in a short while. And it is also a program that will facilitate you with um, resources that you may not be able to achieve if maybe I would say in a different circumstance, even though this is considered as an international program and your main um, qualifying body is actually across the seas, you actually get to have a lot more resources if you are able to study there in the UK. Right. So let's move on to the program details. Right. So once you are registered to this program, you have a minimum period of three years to complete the program that means that is the minimum period you are not allowed to finish any earlier than that but you are allowed to finish within six years okay that means you have six years to pass all the subjects that is required for you to um, get this qualification now um, talking about the intakes when you can join the program um, we have two intakes um, the UOL actually takes in two intakes, one in September and the other would be in May. Um, if you are joining us in SAGI for your um, lectures and tutorials and so on, if you are joining us here, we encourage our students to join in September instead of May intake. That is to facilitate that you... Um, receive more lectures and more tutorials to really prepare you for the examinations right 
And the award, uh, what do they mean by award here is you have either a standard entry LLB, that is if you are a student who has no undergraduate degree at the time of registration, or if you are a student with an undergraduate degree, then you would be choosing to register for the graduate entry LLB. Now, the difference in between these two awards is that for standard entry LLB, it prepares you, it um, prepares you to qualify for the upcoming step, which is to enter the legal practice process. Um, whereas the other graduate entry LLB, it sort of prepares you for um, rather a different pathway because you already have an undergraduate degree and it may be a degree in any field of studies. It does not necessarily be in law, right? So uh, moving on to the program structure. Now, this is the most interesting part because this is where we get to know what are the subjects that you will be encountering in the three-year program, right? So in the first year, you will see legal systems and methods, public law, contract law, and criminal law. And all of these four subjects are required as compulsory subjects. That means if you don't pass these subjects, you are not allowed to progress to the second year. And uh, these are the core subjects, which is expected of you to know in any part of the world. So you can't miss these subjects. Now we move on after your completion of year one, then we move on to your year two, where you will see two core subjects, which is tort law and um, law of trust. And you also have two other subjects, which is family law and commercial law. Now um, at SEGI, we are actually moving towards um, adding another subject, which is EU law. Now, if you are aware and have been doing some research about your law degree, you will know that um, for you to achieve a qualifying law degree in the UK, you will have to pass the EU law subject. Right. So in order to ensure that our students here actually are able to achieve the qualifying law degree, we are now making efforts to um, provide EU law as part of your year two subjects, right? And upon completion of this year two, then you move on to your year three, which is your final year in the studies. And you again see two core subjects, which is jurisprudence and legal theory, and also your um, property law. Now, these two are actually core subjects, and you have two other elective subjects, which is company law and law of evidence now some of these subjects starting from your year one if you have already completed your a levels or if you have completed your diploma in law most of it you would have already encountered in that stage of studies so going through all of this again shouldn't be an issue for most of you right okay so now let's talk about entry requirements what it takes for you to get into this program now if you are signing up for a degree program, it is expected that you must be at least 17 years of age at the time of registration. And also for the academic qualifications for you to get into the program, we this applies for Malaysian students, right? Um, you will need a minimum band four in the Malaysian University English test. Um, if you would like to sit for this test and if you are not aware of how and um, what knots of the procedure and registration and so on, you can always keep in touch with us. You can always contact us on that, right? So um, the MUET minimum band for is a compulsory requirement. And then we move on to the other um, pre-university requirements. So you can either have an A-level qualification where you are required to have at least two subjects and I might have to insist here that emphasize here that um, it is not really a requirement that you pass your law subject, but if you are a person who is very much um, aiming to score better 
in your degree, then I would really encourage you to pass your law subject because that is uh, a crucial requirement there. Now, if you have your foundation done, um, please do get in touch with us because um, we do accept foundation and UOL does accept foundation as well, right? So we might have to run through what exactly was your syllabus for the foundation. And if you have a diploma that is recognized by the Ministry of Higher Education, that is accepted as well. So for those students who have uh, been with us for diploma in law, please um, do try your um, luck in, in applying because um, I believe UOL accepts diploma as well. Right, and recently UEC has been also added to their entry requirements. And um, for UEC, you are required to have at least a grade B in five subjects. Okay, so for any other qualifications, for example, if you have O levels or any other qualifications that has equal um, level of this other quali um, sorry academic qualification, then please do come to us. We will be able to sort it out through, right? So um, if let's say you are an international student, of course, your academic qualifications may differ because um, we might have to check with the University of London about it. But as long as it is a pre-university um, qualification, then I believe it should be recognized because UOL does have a, a, a list of um, requirements that recognizes most of pre-university qualifications that is available around the world. And also, if you are joining us at SAGI or if you are joining the UOL program from anywhere else, um, it is required for you to actually pass their English requirements where we have the um, tests of English as a foreign language and also the IELTS, um, International English Language System requirements over there. Right. So if you are an international student and looking forward to join this program so please be mindful of this particular requirement they are very much um, careful about this because the mode of uh, the language of this um, program is actually conducted in english so they want you to have proper english right so um those are basic details on how to get into the program what we are going to look at next is your classes what we do in Taiki when you join us for this program right so we start with lectures usually lectures are in the afternoon and evenings because we have an um, expect students who are joining us as part-time students which means they um, could be working in the morning and they will be joining us in the afternoon and the evening lessons so this is to accommodate those students who are working we are considering you so we are actually providing these lectures in times which would be flexible for you to attend now apart from lectures you also have tutorials where in your tutorial sessions we focus on exam questions and um, we try and attempt and improvise your your attempts on exam questions to to get a better chance of you sitting for the exams later right scores are always important right independent learning now um independent learning what we mean by that is apart from your lectures and tutorials that we provide in Sagi college we also have an expectation from the students that you do your own learning as well now this is very crucial because um this program is initially planned to be a distance learning program as well so we have some students who have opted to become uh, students as private candidates so that means they are doing their learning on their own but when you enroll with us at Sagi college we offer you additional help by giving you lectures and tutorials. But at the same time, we want you to do your independent learning as well. Now, why we want you to do your independent learning? Um, the reason is because once you are out of this program, once you're done with this program, 
you are very much independent in your legal practice. So for you to be prepared for what is out there, we want you to start when you are doing your degree qualifications, right? So in order to prepare you for that, we encourage you to do independent learning. But of course, this independent learning is not exactly something that is compulsorily uh, expected from you, right? Okay. So earlier when I say we have uh, independent learning, I also mentioned about this VLE, Lost Virtual Learning Environment. So what is it exactly? This is a student portal for those students who have been with us um, in SAGI for your pre-university program. You are aware of our Blackboard system. Now, this is something similar that um, the University of London provides for you. Now, what you can find in this uh, virtual learning environment, you will be able to register for your subjects each year. You will be able to register for your exams um, when it's time for you to do so. You are also able to find the online library. Now, online library under the University of London is the most extensive library um, I have personally encountered, right? So there is no excuse for our students to say that um, you were not able to find any materials outside the materials that we are providing you and so on. It's actually very much extensive. And if you are able to go through it, you will learn a lot more. And this is where your independent learning comes in. It's very important. Now, other than this three, you also will be able to find past exam papers. Um, that means exam question papers from the previous years up until 2015, if I'm not mistaken. And this will be very much helpful along with the examiner reports where um, the examiners give you a, a, a detailed feedback on how students should have answered, what was the mistakes uh, commonly done by students and how it should be corrected, the cases that you should have included. These are in detail reports on how the questions should be answered. Now, apart from that, you also have mini lectures and lecture plus videos now these are short videos and um, conducted by the lecturers in the uk from university of london the lecturers who are teaching the program over there in the uk so what they do is they record short lectures and they upload it in this vle for students around the world to know more or understand better uh, in case there's no much clarity about certain topic there is always this uh, other option for you to actually clarify yourself if let's say the lecturer at SAGI is not really um, helping you or if you can't find any other suitable materials to understand, you can always keep in touch with the lecturers over there in the UK at the University of London. Right. So these are the um, functions that you will be able to find in your BLE. Now, moving on, what SAGI provides for you if you are joining us? What can you find in Blackboard? Right. So what is Blackboard exactly? Now, SAGI has actually implemented a student portal system um, called Blackboard Ultra. Now, this has been in practice for quite some time now, and it has proven to be very much helpful, especially during the MCO times where classes had to be conducted online and we had to share materials, tutorials, any 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 um, lesson materials with the students without seeing the students. So what you will be able to find in this Blackboard, you are usually able to find course pages, specially dedicated for each subject that you have enrolled. And in this separate subject pages, you will be able to find the notes, needing materials or tutorial materials that will be provided by your lecturers for each subject. Right. So this is an expectation that you actually go through the notes and so on before you attend the class for that specific topic. Right. So other than these materials, you are also able to communicate with the lecturer and the lecturer with students too. 
So this is considered as a very much important um, aspect of your studies because without proper communication, I believe you can't really establish a proper understanding of what's going on in class. And uh, that is really necessary. So if you have any issues and if you are not able to actually reach the lecturer, you can always do so in our Blackboard Ultra. Right. So these are the things that we actually prepare for you when you enroll to this program. Your other question to tackle it um, would be your assessments um, available for this program. Now, assessments for this LLB program is a three hour long final examinations comprising mainly of essay and case study questions right so when i say essay uh, most of you will know that it has to be either um, an essay question which is about statements or opinions or it can be also an essay about problem solving right so i believe that um, if you have done your pre-university programs or your diploma, this must be something that you are used to already. So it shouldn't be an issue. Um, it is almost the same because um, there is no much difference that you can make in the types of questions for essay and so on. Um, it is also 100% uh, examinations based assessment. That means you do not have any coursework to talk about. You do not have any other assessments that would require you to sit down and focus other than revising and preparing for your examinations. So in that way, um, I, I believe that is actually an advantage to most of us because it's just your exams, your final exams. You don't really have to worry about doing assignments. Okay, so exam period, we have two series, one in May or June, and the other would be in October. Our SAGI students will be sitting for the May-June series, which is the main series. You are allowed to sit for four exams, means four subjects. But in October, because it is a reseat series, the University of London allows you to only sit for two subjects. Right? So if you find it actually difficult to sit for all four in one series, then we do advise you to actually split the subjects where you do two in May, June and two in October, right? So that is to um, ease a little bit your workload and so on, but it will definitely um, affect your study progress because if you are completing half of your studies in October, half of the exams in October, that means it's going to delay your year two subjects. So that is why I'm saying um, we usually encourage our students to actually sit for all four subjects in May, June. In case if you are not able to pass all four and if you would like to repeat or reseat the subject, you can always do it in October and then progress from there. Right? So recognition of the degree. Now, uh, questions will be about if I finish my degree with UOL, is it going to be recognized only in Malaysia and the UK? Um, as far as I know and I have done my research, at this moment, I am very sure that this degree is definitely recognized in the UK because it originates from them. And it, was, it is also recognized in Malaysia because um, the Legal Profession Qualifying Board actually recognizes it. And in Australia as well. And I have checked that a few Australia in Australia, it differs because if you are um, to enter into legal practice in Australia, it depends on each state's requirement. So as far as the states that I have checked so far, most of it, Australia is still accepting this law degree because Australia is still considered as the Commonwealth countries. So this applies to any other Commonwealth countries. But to be um, more sure about it, please do contact the admission departments that um, is uh, in the relevant institutions that you want to join in case you would like to join 
for the master's program, the postgraduate programs, or if you would like to join a, a professional certificate program, for example, in, in Singapore or in maybe Hong Kong, anywhere in the world, please do check with your admissions department, right? But as far as this program is concerned, um, I believe since it's actually available throughout the world, uh, most of Asian countries, Europe, and many other parts of the world, I think and I believe that it is actually accepted and recognized, right? So what can you do after your graduation? Once you're done, successfully done with this program, you have all the subjects passed and you're good to go. You can either choose to progress to qualify for legal practice, or you can choose to progress to further your studies to other postgraduate programs, for example, your master's, and then towards your PhD, or it can be to any other discipline. Or you can choose to um, join the employment in legal firms, right? So we will be discussing on your qualification after your degree towards the legal practice. If you are actually interested in joining legal firms immediately after your degree, that is still accepted. Um, but one thing is that since you do not have the qualifications for legal practice, you will be um, admitted as a, either a legal clerk, which is a conveyancing clerk or litigation clerk. And that is the most that you can achieve. Um, sometimes some legal firms are willing to accept you as paralegal as well. If let's say given your research experience is detailed enough, but that totally depends on the legal firms. Right. So um, do check around if you are interested in joining the legal firms right after your degree. Right. But if you are choosing to actually further your studies to postgraduate programs, that is your master's or PhD, usually these options are for those who intend to not go into the legal practice. For example, if you are interested in, in, in going into education field or if you are interested in joining any other fields out there that you think might be relevant to your legal expertise. Now, you might want to actually get into this master's program. Um, locally in Malaysia, we do have a several um, public institutes, public higher education institutes who are providing the master's program as well as PhD. Now, um, for you to actually join most of this master's program, you are actually required to have at least a second upper class for your um, completion of the program. Anything below second upper, which is uh, second lower or third class, um, you will still be considered, but it will be only on the basis of other experience that equally matches to the other requirements. So my advice is always aim to keep it up above the second upper class. Okay, so um, what are the grades you usually need to have if you if wish to achieve at least a second upper class? Um, I recommend that you maintain your grades above B the grade B. So anything below the grade B, that means you are on your way to actually achieving um, maybe lesser, maybe second lower or a third class, right? So you might want to watch on that. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about certificate in legal practice because I, I received feedback saying that most of you are actually interested in knowing about what exactly is this CLP about. Okay, so CLP is actually your one-way ticket to get into the legal practice. Legal practice, if you wish to go to the court, represent your clients, work in legal firms as lawyers, practitioners, then you definitely need to have CLP. And for you to actually register as a candidate for the CLP examinations, you must fulfill the criteria set by the Legal Profession Qualifying Board. In short, we call them LPQB, right? So what exactly is needed from you? You must have a minimum of three credits at SPM level, okay? 
um, or its equivalent obtained in one and the same examinations. Recently, um, the LPQB started to recognize UEC qualifications, right? Um, apart from that, if you have O levels and so on, you will definitely have to be in touch with them to see if it is recognized, right? Um, the other requirement would be to have two minimum principal passes at STPM level or any equivalent obtained in one and the same examinations, and this includes your A levels, right? So A levels are definitely recognized for your CLP criteria. And lastly, you are to have a recognized law degree, a recognized law degree in Malaysia. So what exactly do they mean by a recognized law degree? Now, a recognized law degree has to be one that you studied for, for a minimum of three academic years. And it should contain a minimum of 12 law subjects out of which you must have passed six core subjects. Now, all of these six core subjects are covered in your program structure in this uh, UOL um, Bachelor of Laws program. It includes your contract law, criminal law, public law, property law, evidence, and also your tort law. So these are the six core subjects that you definitely have to pass in your law degree. And lastly, you should actually complete the law degree within six years right um, for UOL LLB program it has to be completed within seven years but if you remember still um, your program under the requirement of UOL expects you to finish this entire program within six years okay and for UOL they also have a special requirement where you must have obtained at least a second class lower anything below which is third class you will not be considered for your clp um, candidature right so what exactly are you going to do in your clp <clears throat> you sit for the main exams in july each year um, you will sit for five papers the general paper which consists of contract law and tort law procedures Civil procedure, which is on the procedures that we have for civil claims, criminal procedure for criminal um, trials, evidence, the law of evidence and the procedures, and professional practice, which teaches you about the procedures and the practices that we have among the legal practitioners. Okay, so the catch here is why do people find it very difficult to pass this CLP? um the catch here is out of these five subjects if you fail only one subject you are given a conditional pass and allowed to retake the paper up to two times during the supplementary exams in october but if let's say you fail more than that two or more papers that is where you will have to sit for all five the GP, civil procedure, criminal procedure, evidence, and professional practice, all five papers again. Even if you have passed some of it, doesn't matter. Okay, so that is the trap that, and that is why most people find it difficult to pass all five papers and get through with their certificate, right? So what are the things you have to know about CLP? You are only allowed to sit for four attempts maximum. That is the first main examinations. And if you have failed more than two papers, you're going to sit for it again. And then if it continues, then you have to sit for it again. But you're only allowed to resit for these papers three times only. So once you have actually exhausted all these main examinations and three resits allowance, you will be um, automatically removed from the list of candidates for CLP. And as of now, the latest update, it is that you are only allowed for these four attempts. You are not allowed to register again or appeal again to sit for these exams. It means you lose your chance to actually obtain this CLP in Malaysia. Right. So if you insist that you want to start your legal practice, then you will have to go out of Malaysia 
and maybe get your BPTC, which is in the UK, Bar Professional Training Course, or you will have to go to the Practice Legal Training, PLT in Australia, or the any any, any other um, practice certificate programs that is recognized in Malaysia, right? So if let's say you successfully complete this qualification, you are required to do a chambering. Chambering is usually an internship period in a legal firm for nine months. If you are in the West Malaysia and if you are in the East Malaysia, you are required to do a period of 12 months. And upon completion of this chambering period, that is when you will actually be called to the High Court of Malaya or Sabah Sarawak and you may then start your legal practice successfully, right? So this is the basics that you will have to know about your CLP and what you have to do before you actually sit for CLP. Now, um, legal education. Now, before I actually end my explanation and uh, discussion here, now, legal education, as we all have heard numerous times when we either wanted to or we shared our plans to enroll into legal education, we always hear that legal education is not easy, definitely a challenging one. But um, once you actually enroll into it, you might find it that um, maybe it's not exactly challenging. And for some people, they might find it extremely challenging. But it is known to be challenging for a reason. Because it prepares you to provide service for people. So when you are providing service for people, you will have to be the one who knows the law. Right? So quite frequently nowadays, students are more focused about passing the examinations. And I believe that this understanding, this concept of getting through the legal education may not really bring you to a, a very um, long distance because your focus is on answering exam questions. Once you're done with this exam question, how are you going to survive, right? So my suggestion and a little bit of an advice here is that always put effort to understand the law. Right. So once you can understand the law, you can join all those people who have made it through and succeed even better than them. Right. So always remember to understand the law. OK, so um, with that. I end my sharing here and I pass it back to Miss Cassandra. Thank you. All right, thank you, Miss Alamel, for your sharing. So now we're open for Q&A session. So if you have any question, please type on a comment and we will answer it. Okay, here we have a first question from Michael H. Peter. Let's say a person is interested to be specialized as a criminal lawyer, what should he do? Over to you, Ms. Alamel. Right, um, thank you for your question, Michael. So if let's say you are interested in becoming a criminal lawyer, um, of course, first you will have to get your law degree and once you are done with your law degree for you to be a lawyer as i explained earlier you will have to complete your clp now once you complete your clp your area of practice you should be choosing the litigation because uh gen in general we have two areas and then we are able to actually classify it into more smaller categories but the general two areas would be litigation and conveyancing now litigation is where um criminal trials and criminal cases are usually handled 
So if you are choosing to actually be a person who um, practices as criminal lawyer, you should be focusing on litigation practice. So you should be applying to litigation firms and you should be joining um, as a junior to litigation lawyers. And that is how you actually progress yourself. So I hope that helped a little bit. Pass it back to you, Mr. Sen. Okay, and for next question from David Siong, is foundation program risk recognized for CLP consideration? Right, um, thank you for your question. Now, um, I believe that uh, earlier when I projected that um, it requires you to have STPM or any equivalent programs, um, it has to be something that has been set in one examination series. So if I'm not mistaken, uh, foundation program is actually something that you sit for your exams in quite uh, a few months gap, right? That is in semesters. So I'm afraid uh, you will have to check again with the LPQB because um, we usually don't receive any queries from foundation program as their pre-university qualification. And it usually is either STPM or A-levels. That is the most common pre-university qualifications that we usually receive. But if you have any questions that um, regarding your foundation program, please always try to contact the LPQB. They are quite responsive to their emails. Thank you, Ms. Alamel. So next question will be from Chris Wong. For CLP, if student doesn't have STPM or A-level, does he eligible to study CLP? Over to you, Ms. Alamel. Okay, so if let's say the student doesn't have a CPM or A-levels, that means either he has a different qualification or that he doesn't have any um, pre-university qualification, I don't believe he's actually eligible to study CLP because without this pre-university qualification, you won't be able to progress to your um, undergraduate degree. So without this too, I don't think you will be able to progress to um, study your CLP. I hope that answers. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so next question from Ms. Rashida. What if I have different qualification than the other listed here? Over to you, Ms. Alamil. Okay, um, it is not actually an issue. I'm assuming you're asking for the LLB program. Um, yes, the UOL does consider different qualifications. So if you actually have a qualification that was not listed in the slides earlier, um, you can always contact us and we can help you to clarify on that. And if you would rather communicate directly with the UOL, you can always do so. But there are actually um, quite a lot of different qualifications that the UOL recognizes. I hope that answers you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next question. We have from Chris Wong. What about an adult who doesn't have STPM or A-level? Could he read law with UOL? Over to you. Right. Um, I would need to know actually what exactly is your qualification because if you don't have an STPM or A-levels, uh, I'm guessing it is uh, either an international pre-university qualification or if you, uh, if you don't have any pre-university qualification, then it is not possible for you to actually read law with UOL. So I recommend that you actually get on with a pre-university program and then proceed to your UOL undergraduate degree. Thank you. Okay, lastly but not least, uh, last question from Mr. Raymond. Do we have other optional subjects to choose from? Over to you. Right. 
so um other optional subjects yes there are a lot of subjects to choose from especially when you um, enter your second year with your degree but uh, what we offer here at Sagi is the ones that i projected earlier the uh, four subjects so um if you are actually interested in signing up for these other subjects which you can always find in the UOL website, um, you will actually have to register as a private candidate for that subject alone. So uh, we will not be able to conduct any less <clears throat> lessons if you are choosing. For example, if let's say you would like to enroll for a subject um, criminology, that is available in UOL, but we do not offer, offer any lectures or tutorials, any classes here in SEGI. So if you would like to choose that, then you will have to do it as a private candidate. But still, you still have your optional subjects to choose from, right? But in any case, if you are wondering if our subjects that we are offering is actually enough to um, qualify you for other um, stages, it definitely will qualify you. We have always kept that in our mind when we um, designed the program structure for our site. Thank you. Sorry, we have one more question. Okay, this is from Chukai Chong. Does there any have any equivalent qualification to MUET according to UOL? Over to you. Right, um, definitely yes. There are other equivalent qualifications. Uh, you can always uh, sit for your IELTS or you can also go for your TOEFL. Um, these are the other recognized English qualifications that is um, considered by UOL. So if you have either one of these, then you can definitely go ahead, right? But um, if you do not have any of this and you are a Malaysian, then we encourage you to actually sit for MUET now, um, something additional about MUET is that uh, once you sit for this exam, you have actually two years, right? Two years to complete, um, sorry, two years to actually use this MUET to apply to any universities, right? Thanks. Sorry, we have one more important question again. Um, this is from Ulu Teru. Since the legal profession qualifying board does not recognize my first degree, I do not fulfill the requirement act set out in section 11 of the legal profession act 19 and 76. Over to you, Ms. Alamil. Right, so I'm not really exactly sure what are your qualifications that you have um if if i had information about your qualifications then maybe i would be able to help you see it out all right i think that is all for us now i would like to thank uh, miss alamel for the sharing before we end the preview, Ms. Alma, do you have anything or any advice for those who want to pursue a LLB and all that? Right. So um, I realized that we actually have quite a number of our participants today that um, you have requirements which are actually different from what is generally expected by either the LPQB or UOL to join the programs. So if you are actually unsure about whether yours will be accepted or recognized, you can either write to us, okay? Um, you can write to us or if let's say you would rather contact the people directly, then you can always um, contact LPQB or UOL through email. Um, because of course, when they say if um, it's actually a requirement for you to have STPM or any other qualifications that is equivalent and you are not really clear if that applies to that qualification that you have, right? So it's always better to clear it up with the body directly because otherwise um, we may be able to help you and so on. But um, when it comes to applying or registration at the later point of time, 
and again you have an issue with your qualifications and so on it's better to have something in black and white like all lawyers used to say it's always good to have it in black and white right so that would be a more appropriate um, action to proceed with right um as for those who are actually um intending to join the legal education okay i hope that you will actually be able to um, be successful because it takes a lot for you. It takes a lot of hard work. It takes a lot of time. It, it requires you to give in a lot of effort. And without all of this, you may not be able to achieve what I earlier said to understand the law. So always keep that in mind. And I really hope I can see you soon. Right. So take care and stay safe. Thank you, Ms. Alamel, for the sharing and also very wise advice from you. So for those participants who have joined us uh, this afternoon, I would love to thank you so much for joining us for the preview. Uh, before you leave, please don't forget to fill in the form for the ESET form, and then also there will be quiz and also an amazing prize if you won. So we're looking forward to see you again on our next webinars. Thank you. So this link will be open for 30 minutes. That's all. Thank you, guys.